Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 4 Gyan Yoga, Yoga of Knowledge Text 4.1 The Lord of Sri said, I explained this imperishable science of yoga to Vivaswan. Vivaswan spoke it to Manu, and Manu in turn imparted it to Ikshvaku. In this chapter, Krishna explains how through karma yoga one attains jnana and eligibility for jnana yoga. Here, the word jnana conveys much more than merely the theoretical knowledge that informs the action of the karma yogi, causing him to act with the spirit of detachment. Jnana is insight or wisdom into the nature of non-dual consciousness. It gradually awakens in the heart that is free from selfish desire. While the previous chapter stressed karma yoga and this chapter stresses jnana yoga, it will become clear in chapter 5 that Krishna's teaching to Arjuna advocates an integration of the two. And in his conclusion to chapter 6, he makes it clear that this integration culminates in the spiritually emotional life of Bhakti. To further convince Arjuna about the value of this science of yoga, here Krishna speaks of the doctrine's historical legacy. How it came to the world and to whom it has been disseminated. In doing so, he mentions his own involvement in its dissemination, extending into the far distant past. In the course of explaining the history of the science of yoga, Krishna will introduce the principle of divine descent, the avatara. In so doing, he will explain to Arjuna things about himself that are foundational to Bhakti Yoga. Shankara comments that it is the goal and not the path of yoga that is imperishable, avyayam. However, Baladeva Vidyabhushana says that the path of yoga itself is imperishable because it is the essential meaning of the Vedas and it unfailingly delivers the supreme goal. As karma yoga, it consistently delivers its fruits of inner wisdom. When the fruit of karma yoga in the form of self-knowledge ripens and one acts in devotion to God, this liberated yogic attraction is bhakti.